for TCC is an official language certificate based on the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages that assesses the five main English language skills. Use of English, reading, listening, writing and speaking. Its final objective is to certify candidates in these skills at any level from A1 to C2. In addition to being an official certificate, the Oxford TCC helps candidates identify their areas of improvement through its three-step process. Diagnostic. Its main objective is to detect the candidate's initial English level in the CFR. Mock. Verifies the candidate's English level obtained in the diagnostic and also provides practice before the final exam. Certification. It certifies the candidate's English skills in the level obtained. It includes a speaking examination which is carried out by native English speakers. What are the benefits of having the Oxford TCC in your school? The price is accessible. The cost is the same for all levels. Examination dates are available all year round. The school decides when to apply the exams. The digital results are sent five days after taking the exam and candidates will receive the exact percentages obtained in each of the skills tested. The physical copy of the certificate is delivered three weeks after finalizing the process, including the speaking assessment. The whole process takes place within the school facilities. The Oxford TCC is the best option for certifying the English level of students and teachers alike. with the ultimate goal of conquering the world. Gear is very similar. Gear is the world that each student tries to conquer by completing English exercises. Gear is the new digital platform that includes exercises based on the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages designed to improve the student's English level. It includes practice exercises for the entirety of the school year. You can see the students' progress with personalized and thorough reports. Much more interactive platform. Recap section where students are able to retake the exercises that were the most challenging for them. The teacher has full control of the user's progress on the platform and their calendar. More exercises, more content and much, much more. Do you want to conquer the world of English?
Hello, everyone. This is Bio Online International Summit 2020 Revolution Evolution. My name is Andres de la Garza, Regional Coordinator for Bio World. I've been part of Bio World for the past five years and I'll be your host today. This is a really interesting conference, e-learning and new technologies after COVID-19. And we have amazing speakers here today. Jorge and Sergio Rojas, CEOs and co-founders of Bio World and Education and Travel Group. We also have Annette Gebel and Alejandro Nieto, director and manager from Oxford Education. As you can see, everyone's on mute and we're gonna keep it that way. We have over a hundred participants from 15 different countries, but if you have any comments or any questions, please feel free to share them through the chat. Thank you everyone. And I'll handle the microphone now to Jorge Rojas. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Jorge Rojas and I am the managing director for BEO Education together with my brother Sergio, who is also online and will speak to you very soon. Uh, thank you everyone for being here to this very interesting uh, new era about e-learning and distance uh, education. Well, the spreading of COVID-19 pandemic, as estimated by UNICEF, has sent 91% of students worldwide to distance learning. That is about 1.6 billion children and adolescents. In most of OECD countries, millions of students have shifted their learning to online platforms. However, the learning and psychological effects of this drastic change of learning environment are really unknown. Remember, the psychological effects is the most important thing. Just to let you know, we have just visited the Scandinavian Fair of Technology last week. It was an online summit as we are having right now. Actually, very interesting. As I could see how Mexico and many countries of Central and South America, uh, we are at least 10 years behind Scandinavia in terms of education. Uh, David Brown, uh, the CEO, uh, the CEO uh, and, and president of Oxford International Education Group, invite me to this to this fair. At this, as it is only open for educators based in Europe. Very important for you to know that our job at Bio World uh, is to introduce you to the latest resources in education. Bio World is not just about the competitions in the UK, but we are also your friend and your right hand that brings you the latest news regarding education technology. As a Latino, I can tell you that we're looking to develop our own apps, our own data. Every, every school is trying to compete against each other, trying to prove who has the best technology. What I can tell you, these days are gone forever. Trust me, the best online education is the one that has been proved by at least 10 years by experts in education like, like Finland, for example. Do not try to go your own way. Copy models and offer your students the best education ever. Trying to develop your own data or technology could be very dangerous as time is going extremely fast. Schools are, are like companies and those who do not adapt to the world changes will fail. Do not enter to a place where it's not your expertise. Remember, use only apps or websites that have been running for many years now. Do not put in risk your own schools. As a Mexican educator and being in the international education industry for many things, for many years, many things have surprised me last week at the Scandinavian Fair of Technology. I can tell you that almost no school was prepared for the coronavirus. How is it possible that being in the 21st century and we had almost no idea on how to teach in the distance? Just to give you an example, the average of students in a classroom in Sweden is around 20 students per class in the big cities like Stockholm or, or, or Malmo, both between 16 and 18 students uh, per class in the small cities. In Mexico, for example, in the private education, an average of students per class is between 16 and 20 schools. In private schools, uh, education, of course. So 
uh, the very first big mistake in schools uh, that schools are doing is to use tools like Zoom or Hangouts. Why is it a mistake? Online learns out one-to-one -one education or maximum three students to one teacher. Can you imagine how deficient uh, education can be having 20 plus students in uh, primary or secondary school using Zoom or Skype? Teachers cannot even realize, realize if someone is paying attention. Distance education needs to be individual and only to be discussed in groups when being all together. Otherwise, makes it boring and very difficult to focus and of course, to understand. Results cannot even be measured only with an exam. Education, education is changing a lot and it's changing very fast. I will talk to you now about a very innovative way to learning in these students and teachers' well-being. Actually, one of the most difficult problems about distance or online learning is the students' well-being. Did you know that Scandinavia has one of the biggest suicide rates in the world? Well, thanks to app or tools that measure students' well-being, numbers are decreasing year after year, and I find this very amazing. There is one app uh, that has a very nice slogan, and I found it very intelligent and very curious. And it says something like, learning does not happen without a well-being. When you feel your best, you can learn your best. But think about the near future. The truth is that online learning is no longer a dream. After COVID, 99% of the schools will have to adapt their syllabus to distance education. Have you ever thought about students and teachers' well-being? How would you measure it? My school day is a safe channel where students can tell teachers on how they are feeling. Schools can then listen to students' voice and improve their well-being and support their learning. They can, for example, adjust teaching or change class, classroom environment, helps identify class, school, or even district enough to intervene. Our well-being model is sufficiently distributed to students by our artificial intelligence system. The system enables to deliver student service effectively and with this strategy, monitoring and visualizing learning and well-being, and providing immediate feedback. Students use a mobile app or web page to answer well-being questions daily. The data is anonymous and stored in a cloud. The inside tool for teacher portraits the well-being statute of, uh, statute, uh, of the students on a group level and the development uh, from the previous week and gives feedback on which areas of well-being needs to be developed. Uh, my school day measures, analyzes, and explains students' well-being in distance learning. Measures for important models like the learning itself, like self-studying, study support, remote uh, learning environment, and learning materials. Another model would be the social and emotional skills, like task performance, emotional skills, collaboration skills, open-minded skills, and social skills. Uh, another important model would be the social relationships, communicate with teachers, communications with peer, communication outside the schools, student services, and of course, a very important model is the well-being that talks about physical health, emotions, the diet, uh, psychological uh, well-being, and academic uh, well-being. There are many online, online apps that measure students' well-being, and this is something that, that has to be used right now, not in the future, in order to guarantee high class education. We have many applications that will help, help you measure the well-being of your students. You should create your own content, upload it into your system and let us measure all kind of important information. Okay, so now we'll pass my, the microphone to my colleague Annette Goebel, who will talk to you about another uh, important apps in the, in the education, in the new education system. Thank you, Jorge. Hello, everyone. Uh, I can see we have uh, qu quite a, a diversity here from Morocco, Egypt, Mexico, Argentina, and from all over the world. Um, this is amazing. I won't take long. I know we have restricted time. But what I want to focus um, my, my slide on is on telling you uh, how much we're looking into different platforms and different strategies and, and mostly different education models 
because at the end, I, I believe we all, we all can agree that education is gonna change. The whole world is gonna change. And today we have uh, a big problem in our hands, which is enabling students to actually listen and out of that learn to what we wanna, to all the information we want to and need to give to them. Uh, we cannot make sure they're actually paying attention by them spending most of their time at home, right? So we have been researching a lot and we have been working on this model for quite a while. And obviously with this whole situation, we've, we've, we've noted, well, we've speeded up a bit um, in which we found a lot of different education models and especially the one, the one I wanna to talk to you about is a video storytelling uh, learning and teaching method. Okay, so what is this all about? Um, it's pretty much uh, telling the student or teaching the student, the student by storytelling. Okay, it, it is proven that this is a, a method and a method uh, successfully proven in the UK and in Finland, and especially the platform we are we are looking into bringing to you, it was created in these countries. And it's been tested for more than five years. It's it's uh, it's a questionnaire or, or its survey says that 96% of of uh, its participate it ex it works extremely well. Um, and well, what I what I pretty much wanna wanna tell you about this method, it's that it's it's making students actually pay attention because we've noticed actually with uh, the recent social media apps such as TikTok and, and YouTube and many other apps is that the generations today are pretty much growing that way and they're going towards, towards the, the, video, the video type of learning and the, the video way of listening to things and actually getting interested about, about the different subjects. So the platform we are, we are bringing to you and we'll introduce in, in the next few weeks uh, ha has to do with, uh, well, it's mostly focused on, for subjects such as literacy, geography, values and skills. And for example, for these last values and skills, I find pretty interesting that it's mostly focused on empathy and critical thinking. So this critical thinking is something I believe we can we can actually take as an opportunity. And rather than have our students just look at books and read books and, 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 and just look at presentations, we actually want to make human beings that are being that that are being critical to what they're looking at. Today we're all looking at the news every day, right? Because we're all living the same problem but we wanna make our students actually have critical thinking and look at a news and be able to compare and to, and to actually um, make a whole opinion about it with, with sufficient uh, backup or information, right? So this whole storytelling video type of method comes to, to actually engage the students from all ages, but, but mostly it's focused on primary students and secondary students, okay? So this app is, is at the end coming to solve a lot of different is issues, which is also time for our teachers. And it, all, it already has the whole content, but most, most of it all, it's, it's important to realize that we need to keep up with all the changes that are happening in the world, but also with the with the generation we are living with, right? And we were still uh, we were still having the same type of classrooms and the same type of uh, learning method, and we were standing in front of the classroom and teaching to them in the same way that it's th that it's been done for the last eighty years, a hundred years, when actually generations have changed, and we no longer can see a screen as an enemy. But rather than our our friend and our ally, and we need to keep up with that. And this is why in Bio World and Oxford Education we are bringing 
the different platforms, um, well, a variety of platforms that are already successfully proven in these countries that are that have educational methods that are recognized all over the world, right? So especially what I want you to, to kind of uh, keep from my information is that uh, we are bringing different methods, but especially a video storytelling method, which we believe can work very well with our students from first grade all, all the way to ninth grade. So uh, I believe we'll leave the questions at the end of the conference. And now I will give uh, the microphone <laughs> to uh, Sergio Rojas, please. Hello, everyone. And my name is Sergio Rojas, and I'm going to talk about e-learning with children, its advantages, and why do we need to adopt e-learning for them, especially now during this pandemic crisis and the current lockdown. Today, learners want relevant mobile, self-paced, and personalized content. And this needs is fulfilled, fulfilled with the online mode of learning. Here, students can learn at their own comfort and requirement. It is beneficial for both students and teachers in many ways with its increased scope for communication and collaboration through advanced multimedia tools. Apart from smart classrooms at schools, there are also many platforms and apps that make a student productive and resourceful. So children of today, and especially after this lockdown, will choose more towards e-learning methods and activities and also feel comfortable with the trends of online education. Following are some reasons for adopting e-learning for your kids. Large scope of sharing perspectives. Children have vast ranges of communication when they learn online, whether it is between student to student or teacher to student. They have various multimedia tools to present their views, understand other, others' ideas, discuss difficult questions, and solve learning issues. There is no geographical bar barrier and there is no restriction of physical presence. The students enjoy a wonderful platform for learning when they can seek new ideas and insights about the topics and learn through communication and collaboration. During this lockdown, down, it suits the modern digital life. While the students are not going to schools and when everything in life has turned digital, learning through digital media is a fitting design of learning for a modern student. They can spend time effectively on learning, access online platforms, attend virtual classes, do homework, and work on his weak areas with expert guidance from scholars and teachers. Mobile learning has become the trend of the day, lending an easier access of the web-based educational activities. Further, online tools like video lectures are the easiest way to catch up with the topics that were difficult for students. Another topic is unlimited uh, supply of resources. The online education platform is like an ocean. When you adopt e-learning for your kids, you will see that there are many educational platforms that offer help students who need support for, the, for their educational issues. E-learning is like a treasure for students where they, can, where, where they can search what they want for their subjects. Platforms offer evaluation methods and diagnosis tests so that they can improve in their studies. And there's also scope for exploration. When a student embarks on e-learning, he has a great scope for exploring the subjects, learning new topics, and using less time to increase their knowledge in specific topics. They can also concentrate on courses that interest him. There is also flexible timings. Apart from classroom learning, a student can learn online at any time they wish. There is no limitation to their learning timings and are not restricted to learn under a particular teacher. It is all their choice and, they, uh, and, they want, uh, and what they want to learn at any time they wish to learn. Interaction with students from around the world, which is for me one of my favorite parts. When you, with improved improve technology tools in e-learning, you are able to interact with people from around the world, exchange ideas and views, and, and the best of all, have fun. It is wonderful to find a student from one part of the world learning from a teacher from the other part of the world at any time to improve their studies and knowledge. Anyway, in, this, in these difficult times, adopting e-learning from your kids it brings many rewards. 
E-learning is a wonderful educational way that offers students of the modern generation its time flexibility, continual supply, supply of resources, customized learning patterns, sometimes free educational services, improved communicative abilities for students, and digital frame with scope for exploration and exchanges of idea at the global level. Not that, not that now that we are experiencing this lockdown and while everything, turning, it, everything is turning digital in this modern world, education also tends to lean towards digital methods in teaching and learning so as to make e-learning the most successful education te te technology now and in, in, in this new York future. So I, I pass the microphone to Alex Nieto who will continue with this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, well, as um, Sergio, Jorge, and Annette were saying, uh, I think uh, COVID changed the way we, we were doing our things, even in our jobs or in the schools. Uh, we have a lot of contact with uh, schools right now. And that's why uh, I think this, 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 important is, this, this theme is really important. Uh, a lot of the schools are telling us about how they change the way they are uh, giving classes to their school to their students sorry so they are using different platforms as like zoom like maybe skype hangouts etc so that's why we wanted to bring you more ideas how how it can work with your school and also the different ways that you can interact with your students. Maybe, for example, like Jorge said, maybe it's a well-being situation, or it's a, we're going to focus more in, in kids, or, or also maybe the videos. Videos are working right now, uh, are getting very popular and more with millennials, uh, as we can uh, saw in the, in the presentation. So I'm going to present you a little bit about the, how is the game-based learning. And as we were saying, many students, uh, are native mobile device users and they are very capable of communicating with devices such as tablets and, and smartphones. Uh, therefore, uh, it is very important that schools and teachers apply these tools for learning purposes. Uh, uh, games combine, as we can see in the, in the presentation, games combine teamwork and using one's skills and knowledge to achieve a common goal. So, uh, completing tasks, earning points, and receiving instant feedback encourage learners, learners to pursue new achievements. So what does this mean? It's uh, the different way how uh, teachers and schools can see the, how their students interact, how can actually they change the way they learn uh, very uh, different platforms. Maybe they, they like learning playing, maybe they like uh, making some videos. So that's the way right now with schools and, and, and worldwide are changing the, the, the way to teach students. No? So this kind of learning technology enables completing tasks. Uh, for example, by using mobile apps, such as the camera, voice recorder, and video tools. Instead of text, the students can submit their answers with these apps uh, that they, they actually the students are used to. In a game, for example, teams, teams of students work together to solve a challenging set of tasks. Uh, by applying their imagination, they can experience the joy of co-creating and innovating solutions for real life problems. And also one of the many advantages that, for example, game-based learning has is that the teachers also can create a game that is suit suited to his or her own students' special circumstances. What does this mean? For example, uh, there are two easy tasks. The easy tasks as for are boring for the students. And maybe the two difficult tasks discourage the players or the students, you know? So that's why these kind of platforms are tailor-made for those who work with. One of the, one of the best things of these platforms uh, is that maybe um, the teachers, they don't have um, more time to maybe to create the games maybe to create content for the students. So one of the benefits that has these kind of platforms is that these platforms, they already have the games, they already have the structure. So just the teachers can add the content to, the, to this uh, platform and then they can send it to the, to the students. This is an easy way to work with them. Uh, there are also uh, different learning styles. 
for example, different answering methods, such as mind maps, drawings, other applications are easy to apply to these kind of platforms. Uh, teachers can design the game in a way that enables the students who normally are not the brightest students in class. Well, uh, uh, so th maybe these, these students, they don't have the chance to interact a lot in classroom, but they have the chance to win the game. No, maybe in their houses, they feel more safe or secure. Maybe they can uh, work with the, with the platform more uh, safest in their own way. Uh, for example, building, building a lesson plan around game challenges, also the teachers, to observe the topic at hand for new angles. Instructing and running a learning game is an immersive fun and helps the educator to connect with his or her students. This is also important that uh, the teachers also are getting used to the platforms and not just for sending the information or the games, for example, for the students. It's important that the teachers get used to use these platforms and they also love and like the platforms that they are uh, uh, interacting with, okay? So this is not just about the one platform. Uh, actually, we are uh, looking for new ideas. There are also uh, virtual reality platforms where they can interact, they can use their smartphones, they are, actually they can use their um, uh, video games. So they can, they, they can play with those and also have this uh, educational way that we are looking for. Okay, so there are uh, more organizations that provide students the ability to create and design uh, using immersive uh, technologies. So uh, I'm going to uh, well, pass the microphone to, to Annette just to give you uh, the big news that we have for you. Yes, thank you, Alejandro. Well, with all of the, well, not all of this, we would like to give you a lot more information, but obviously time is limiting. Um, pretty much what we wanna tell you and leave, leave you with is that um, as part of BO World and Oxford Education, uh, we have uh, created, and you are the first people to know about it, uh, we have created a, a new department which is called e-learning system. And it involves bringing all of the, uh, bringing the platforms that are, that are being used in Scandinavia. This is based on the fair that uh, Jorge was saying at the beginning. He, he, he attended a fair of different education platforms uh, from Scandinavian countries last week. And, and at the end, we are bringing the best platforms they are using over there uh, in order to fit each and one of your needs. We understand that every single school is a whole world, it's a world of difference. So obviously, we cannot, we cannot put everything in one platform one and two why go through the hassle of creating a whole new platform when when something is already being used it's proving to be successful and and at the end it can match perfectly what we're looking for which is education um 2020 after after covid right so so at the end the idea is to bring um well many different uh, focuses the main, the main focuses are gonna be the ones we just told you about, which is psychology or, or the whole part of how our students and teachers are feeling, the video storytelling, the platforms only focusing on kids, which are, which are own, just learning to speak and to write and to read, and how we can engage uh, platforms to their, to their whole education method. And, and well, and from, from there on, right? So uh, I do want to close by saying we are at a time where kids are spending most of their time at home. So giving them access to a world beyond their immediate environment is more important than ever. And I, I think we all agree on this. And this is why BO World and Oxford Education, we believe that diversity in digital platforms as a learning and teaching method is extremely important and urgent for schools to consider. We will make sure to bring to you the latest, most innovative and success proven platforms there are out there. 
uh, as I said before, mainly focusing on the best education models which come from the Scandinavian countries. And well, last but not least, we would like to invite you all to answer a quick questionnaire that uh, Alejandro will will show, uh, will give you a link on, on the chat here in Zoom, but also you will get an email with this questionnaire. It won't take you more than five minutes to answer it, but the whole objective of, of this questionnaire is for us not to come up with what we think is best, uh, but more importantly, to listen to you and understand exactly what you are looking for and, and what each school needs right now as a platform and obviously trying to come up with, a, with the best offer there is, okay? So, and well, last but not least, I, I want to, I want to uh, thank you all for attending the conference and I'll just give the mic to Jorge to, to wrap this up and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Okay, uh, so before uh, we go to the, to the questions, remember that all the information we're bringing to you is uh, from, it's information that Oxford International has been using uh, for a long time. Remember that Oxford International education is not only about the BEO or their summer programs or the language schools they have. Remember, they have uh, private schools all over the world, including, of course, uh, the UK, Canada, and some other countries. And these are uh, app application or websites that are already being used um, uh, for many, many years. Again, uh, my advice and wh what we were told during the, this uh, technological fair is that we should not try to, to develop our own applications or data because it can be very, very risky. What I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that you have been developing a lot of um, high standards of uh, quality at your school, and, and, and times are changing so fast that not because trying to develop a new uh, distance learning tool, uh, your reputation could, uh, could go the, the, the wrong way. So uh, we will give you some time to, to, make, uh, to, give us, to ask us some questions. We're very happy to answer them. And remember that uh, we will send you like a big package with all the information you will need, like names of the applications, of the website. But first, we, we need to know what you're looking for or how you are working uh, at the moment. Because if you're only working with Zoom Hangouts, then uh, you really need, will need our help or a specially, uh, someone specialized in this, this matter, but uh, we're very happy to help, okay? So if you have any questions, this is the correct moment. Okay, so thank you everyone. We will do the Q&A through the chat. So no, you can do it. So it's Sir Franco, if you wanna go ahead and ask your question, feel free to use the microphone and the uh, video. Can I go first, please? Oh. Um, yeah, go ahead and we will go afterwards with it, Sal Franco. I will give the word. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your insightful parts of presentations connected to e-learning and new technology after COVID-19. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, my question goes to uh, Alejandro Nieto. Yeah. His uh, part is entitled uh, Play While Doing Homework. Do you mean uh, by this title, do you mean that uh, kids or learners uh, should learn by doing? I mean, if you want, for example, to teach uh, your kids uh, um, uh, names of animals, do you have to bring uh, some puzzles or games and then they have to uh, uh, detect or know animals by doing that game or uh, working out that game? And uh, uh, while doing, they learn about their uh, they, uh, while teaching them fruits, uh, names of fruits or whatever you, you have the intention to teach. So my question is, do you mean by play while doing homework is learning by doing? Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, the objective of this platform is that uh, students 
learn while they are playing in their uh, mobile devices. And yes, I, I understand the, uh, your point. Um, there are different ways to, to, to start learning. For example, for kids, as, uh, as we were saying, maybe for kids, it's another way for learn and for, for interact with their teachers, with interact with their parents. Also, this is very important. Uh, the, the parents are also a very important part of these uh, 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 platforms. Why I say so? Why I say this? Because uh, they can see what they what their kids are doing at, at the end, you know. So yeah, actually, the the good part of this is that all the teachers can interact, can can use their own uh, um, information, their content to send it to the to the to the students, to their parents, and and they can learn with this new way of of opportunity, no. Okay, Claire, got you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't know if, if I answer your question, but uh, yeah, I, I got what you mean. I got what you mean. I got you. I got what you mean. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so next question, teacher Itzel Franco, if you're available. Okay, yeah. Um, I actually have two questions. The first one is related to the apps on measuring the well being in students. You know, I thought that was pretty innovative. I mean, um, and the second one is uh, regarding the, if, if the fact of uh, maybe finding all of these tools of video making and, um, and all of the suggested tools within what plat one platform, if that's possible. Because currently we, we've been using many apps and many different platforms for different needs. So I'm not sure if I understood correctly um, and if you're actually you were sharing that in the Scandinavian countries, they're actually using only one platform that covers all these needs, or am I mistaken? Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, maybe we we'll answer this. No, no, it's okay. I was uh, just going to, uh, uh, maybe we can both answer. Well, it's a, hi. Uh, well, the, um, hi. you know, the, in, the, in, the, in this new system of education or distance education, the, um, what I heard like in five or six different conferences is that, that the well-being uh, between teachers, parents, and students, it's going to be the most important thing. Just to give you an example, uh, I have uh, two kids and I have friends with, who also have kids. And what they are experiencing at the moment is that because they are using uh, applications like Zoom, and there is only one teacher for many, many students, uh, instead of having uh, six hours per day uh, during school. They are only receiving like half an hour daily from what they, uh, what they were studying every, every day. And schools, they don't have any idea about the, well, the, the well-being of the, of the students. So answering your questions, I will forward you a lot of, uh, quite a few uh, applications that you should use for the, for the near future. And it doesn't matter if you use it with another with another application or website, but the but the well-being will be the most important uh, tool for your for your school. And, and answering your second um, question, we, uh, question is that we will we will offer you like a platform with two or three different uh, applications, so that you don't have twenty or thirty options because there are thousands of options, but we are suggesting just to use the applications uh, uh, being used in Scandinavia and all over Europe, which, uh, which we think are the, uh, the most important ones. And not only the most important ones, but the ones that have been in the market for maybe uh, 10 years, and that will help you a lot. Okay. And I would just like to add about, only about regarding your last question, is that that's pretty much like the added value we are uh, we're kind of saying and um, we've noticed that the scandinavian countries because they're so so far ahead from latin american countries which is which is a reality they might have started with one platform for the english uh, subject like we did or math but that was like 10 years ago today they are actually i don't know they, they are actually using the app for 
furniture in 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 the classroom for how how the uh, student should engage through videos and blah blah blah. So what we want to give you is you deal with one person or one company only, which is us, and we provide the the service of all of the different platforms. And at the end, how we're picturing it is kind of creating the perfect package for your school, which might be a different uh, package because of the needs maybe Livingstone has. Uh, I see Mabel there. So uh, it's just, we wanna make it as tailor-made as possible, but for you to actually deal with only one company, which would be us. Yeah, the good thing about distance education is that in many cases, can it's almost for free or uh, the the money you you have to invest is it's not uh, it's not at, at all uh, it's not too much at all uh, actually distance education uh, is, should be for free in the in the in the very near future but the problem is how you will implement uh, uh, or what you are going to implement at your school okay i see i got it thank you Thank you very much. Now we will continue with teacher Claudia Mencia. If you can go ahead and, and share your question with us. Ah, hello. Uh, my question was specifically about the fact that you guys mentioned that Zoom and other video conference uh, um, applications was not a good option to give a class, but how then can you show that you're interacting with the students? Because we have to know, the kids are ready to work by learning with videos, they, they're fine. But the parents are expecting for us to have an interaction with them. So if we don't have those conference or, or video conference, uh, where can we have that interaction with the students to make sure that they're grasping everything, they're understanding, and comprehending all the subjects, specifically with complicated classes like math, physics, uh, in high school level. Yeah, well, just to give you a, to, to answer your question, uh, uh, the, using uh, tools like uh, Zoom or Hangouts at, the, at this moment, it's not, it, it is not that we're saying is incorrect or what we have been told at the, at the, at the technology, uh, fair of technology. The thing is that, the only way to measure if you are doing right or wrong is using the, da the data. And, and, the, and the new applications that we're gonna present you, it will, it, it, it's all about measuring everything. It's about measuring uh, the well-being, the, how is the, the student reacting, et cetera, et cetera. And in the new ways of teaching, for example, a, a, a teacher from Denmark was saying that uh, she was only giving like a 10 or 15 minute lesson and the rest of the lesson uh, was like a self-study process and and then the, the teachers were were going to measure the thing is that imagine a classroom with 60 or uh, with with 20 students or 60 students doing that by uh, live it's already difficult doing through zoom it's even more difficult because you cannot even measure or 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 you cannot know if they are getting concentrated or no so the future about education it's all about using the data and measure every uh, everything the data can give you uh, so that's something we're going to provide you thank you Thank you very much. Now we will continue with teacher Carla Gallegos. All right, um, we will come back to you, teacher Argentia Rodriguez. Here I am. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, no, no, I'm here. <laughs> Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, we can, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, wh one of my questions, and also I, I would like, I don't know which platform is the best one we could use, but sometimes the platforms are not easy 
to use by teachers and also the students. Now, that is what we are confronting in our school. The teachers are really a little um, upset, a little nervous, okay? Because they have learned in a very few time the use of the platform. Mm -hmm. But on the other way, we have parents and students. So everything is remote, everything is uh, at a distance. So we, there is something that we are trying to, we are in the middle of parents, teachers, students, and that is not easy. At this point, it's not easy. Really, really, it's not easy because parents need more help. The students need more, they need more instructions, and the teachers are trying to go behind their needs. That's what I'm, that's what I'm observing. So in, at this point, uh, we are using Microsoft Teams. Before of this, we have uh, at least uh, three weeks using Zoom. Actually, we are beginning this week with Microsoft Teams. So, the teachers, uh, they have been in, in, um, trained during one week using Microsoft Teams. And the students, they have been trained only one day. Uh, we have a lot of problem with it because the parents of the lower grades, they are feeling a little uncomfortable because they think that the students, they are so small, they are so little to use this platform. So what is the best recommendation for this? Because I, I think that probably the coordinators, we are not managing this in the best way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I mean, there are many different answers to, to your question, but, you know, m my feeling is that a uh, school system will definitely change and self-study will, will have to be promoted uh, everywhere in, in, in every country in the, in the world. What I'm trying to say is that uh, the old, the old way of teaching where, where students were used to go to a classroom and the teacher was just standing there and, and giving uh, uh, his lesson is, is going to change. And parents will, will uh, I mean, at least in private education, parents will play a very important role because they will have to pursue their kids to, to do a lot of self-study. And of course, in the new applications or, or website, the teachers will learn how to create their own material, how to upload their own material, but they will also have to teach students how to do their self-study. And again, parents and teachers will learn, will have to learn how to use the, the data. I mean, all the information they will receive from the, from the applications. I can let you know, for example, Microsoft Teams or even Google or um, Gmail applications, they, 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 are, they are very useful, but if we don't get the enough information about results, it's not gonna work at all. So if, a very good advice or tip that I can give you, it doesn't matter which application you buy or use for, you, for your school. Mm -hmm. If you don't get uh, data information, it's like not uh, getting anything at all. Just to give you an example, my kid is, is still in kindergarten and my school uh, teachers are trying to, to convince me that they are giving a very efficient uh, education through, the, through Zoom. Can you, how, how much can a, a five-year-old kid uh, be learning or, a, or my three-year-old daughter? It's very difficult and, and in that way, uh, information should go through parents because uh, uh, it's the only way a school can uh, measure if they're doing right or wrong. So a data analysis is what we're gonna teach you how to use it. And then, you. so you can get the most of the benefit of it. Thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, I would just like to add because it's a subject I, I talked about, um, especially uh, video storytelling is focused on little kids. Just yeah. as just as Jorge mentioned, like education is gonna change and it's a fact that parents are not understanding that being in front of the camera and trying to cut their attention is gonna be the same way as in the classroom. And this is why self-learn is actually being, um, we were looking at a, at a study that a nonprofit organized a competition of platforms and they're actually applying the self-learned platforms in Africa and in, in several places in Africa. The most 
the most poor, the poorest countries, and how they are pretty much like their parents don't know, don't know how to read or how to write or or how to speak English, and the, and kids from six year old six year olds and 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 up, they're actually learning out of a platform, and this is just telling us that if third world countries like really really uh, poor countries or like low resources countries are are being able to learn this way self learn we are going to start also te kind of educating the parent to understand that education is going to change you know and being in front of the camera won't be as being in front of the group yeah, yeah. but in, in as Annette is saying parents will play uh, 40, I mean, in small children or, or uh, between primary and secondary school, parents will play almost like 50% of the role. But that doesn't mean the parent needs to be behind his, uh, his kid or son all day uh, just watching if he's, he's doing his homework or not. But they will have to learn how to work in, a, in, a, in, in distance, you know? It's like in our jobs. Now we're all pr learning how to work in a distance and be more efficient, which is very important. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you very May much. I add something to Argent Argentia's question? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, of course. yes, of course. Well, first of all, I just want to tell you that you are not alone in the world and in this path. Thank uh, you. I, I, I can um, understand and feel what you feel because it's the feeling that we most of us teachers and coordinators have. But I, I can see uh, and I, I got that you have been moving from one, let's say, a platform to another. And first of all, you have, you must have to have clear what a plan, because we have education platforms, meeting plat platforms and tools. So you have to define the needs you have. And my suggestion, my advice is not to move because at this, moment, at this moment, at this time, what you have to do is to find an immediate solution mm -hmm. this moment and start planning for what comes next mm -hmm. when you have to take the big decision, what you are going to do. But at this moment, you have to take I mean, if you decided one meeting platform, we need to work with two tools. And we also have tools that is quite different. So we have a working with an education platform at this moment uh, on the distance is, I think, is not the, the best thing to do. But what we need is meeting platforms. So if you choose Zoom or a Microsoft Team of the one you had uh, uh, chosen, uh, continue with that. Do not move because of obviously, I mean, teacher, I want to get crazy. I mean, uh -huh. so that's the point. And work with tools and think about uh, education platform for the next step. Yeah. That's Thank my you. suggestion. So, Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so before I uh, give the microphone to the next one, I'll just frankly remind you that we have two upcoming conferences, Facing Uncertain Times, The Search for Clarity by Raquel Valenzuela, that this will start at 2 p.m. And also Timeless and Timely Teaching by Kathy Whitaker. So if you wanna go ahead and join those conferences, thank you very much. But also if you wanna uh, stay and keep your questions, we can do it as well. So thank you. And I will continue with teacher Maria Dolores. Hello, everyone. Can you listen to me? Yes. Uh, it's nice to listen to you all and see also of you. Uh, what I recommend you is that in this point, many of the tutorials and also examinations, institutions have provided us as teachers with a lot of resources to solve this problem we have nowadays. So there are lots of platforms that we can get lost. The main thing 
in this in this situation i think in my point of view is to plan and take the best advantage of these tools and also check the needs we have with all students that's my comment thank you thank you Maria Valores. you're welcome okay so we will answer one more question and the rest of the questions we will uh answer you via email, all right? So we can go to the next conference. So the last question is from Mari de Sousa. Okay, I see that you are not muted, but we can't hear you. Okay, sorry. So next question will be from Luis Portillo. Okay, so maybe they left the, the, the room. So we're gonna finish it here actually. I don't know if uh, the speakers wanna add something, uh, but if not, thank you everyone as I said. We will share, we will uh, answer all of your questions via email. Well, the speakers will be. Thank you very much for joining us. This was an amazing, this is the biggest conference we had uh, so far, 145 teachers from 15 countries. Thank you everyone for sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Ay, Muy bien, buenas tardes. Me da gusto saludarla. Puede decir en development. Development. Hi, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys have a great It was really day. interesting. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Miss Carla. Hi, Miss Jimena. Developed countries, <laughs> no países ricos, y es importante decir eso porque. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye. Take Bye. care. See you. <laughs> Thank you so much indeed. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Listo, ya no me Ya, ahora sí. Ya voy a hacer la reunión para que no esté. Gracias.